Imagine if Thor never upgraded Mjolnir. Or imagine if Batman is stuck with 20 years old gadgets. You know, they would be pretty ineffective and that's why we want to measure these things so we can improve them. For solutions architects, key performance indicator, KPIs, are not just numbers. They are a reflection of our impact. They are a reflection of our planning prowess and our ability to steer projects towards their intended goals while aligning with organizational strategies. Because our role is to navigate the complexities of cloud environments, ensuring that every decision aligns with both immediate project requirements and long-term organizational goals, I thought a long time about this and I would like to share my take on the KPIs that matter most for solutions architects working in cloud environments. My name is Elias and I'm a senior solutions architect. Now let's do this. We know by now that cloud migration is more than just moving applications and databases to the cloud. We know that it's a strategic endeavor that should align with the broader objectives of your organization. As a solutions architect, our KPI in this area would focus on the number of planned migrations within a specific timeline. And you say I put the emphasis here on plan. Why? Because our strength lies in designing the roadmap and delivering a comprehensive migration plan to the teams we are working with. For example, just give you an example. Let's consider a large retail company aiming to enhance its customer experience through cloud technologies. The goal isn't just to migrate their e-commerce platform to the cloud. The real goal is actually to do it in a way that supports scalability in a way that integrates uh, advanced analytics, monitoring, and also in a way that improves the site reliability. So you see how our job is to outline how each piece moves. Our job is to ensure that the plan reflects these, you know, these, these broader goals that I just mentioned above. Two, because innovation must be at the heart of what we do, and because the cloud landscape is constantly evolving, staying ahead means being proactive about learning, about experimenting, about suggesting new solutions. So I thought about an effective KPI here, and I want to suggest one that I would like to call the innovation score which could include metrics like the number of new cloud solutions proposed, right? The implementation rate of this cloud solution. Let's find that we proposed 50 last year, but how many suggestions or proposals got really implemented? And even the adoption of emerging technologies within the projects we work on. So take, for instance, the adoption of serverless architecture. Imagine you have noticed that certain microservices within your organization's portfolio could benefit from, you know, the scalability, the cost efficiency, and all those great stuff about serverless computing. So by proposing a pilot project, conducting a successful trial and documenting the benefits, you are then contributing directly to your innovation score. And this not only showcases your role in driving technological advancements, but also highlights your commitment to cost efficiency, your commitment to performance, your commitment to optimization. Three hugely important aspects when it comes to cloud computing. Okay. So far, we covered strategic planning, we covered innovation, but these are just the tip of the iceberg. Our influence as solutions architect extends into every aspect of cloud infrastructure. So stay tuned as we dive into these segments next with insights and real world examples. Let's move together to a topic that's crucial for every organization, especially in today's cost conscious business environment, cost and efficiency management. As solutions architects, one of our primary responsibilities is designing cloud architectures that optimizes cost without compromising on performance. And so the KPI for cost control would include metrics like the percentage of cost savings that you achieved through architectural decisions, 
The utilization of cost optimization tools from simply using regularly AWS Cloud Explorer, a cost explorer, and building reports and tagging uh, the resources correctly to using other third party services like KubeCost if you're using Kubernetes or even Vantage and also the adherence to budget constraints in cloud projects. For example, consider the strategic use of reserved instances or saving plans in AWS. So by analyzing usage patterns, by understanding access patterns, usage patterns, and committing to certain usage levels, we can significantly reduce the operational costs for our organizations. So just imagine a scenario where through careful planning, through careful analysis, you manage to cut down cloud expenses by 20% annually for a high traffic application. This not only demonstrates direct cost saving, but it also shows strategic value of thoughtful architectural design. Another vital aspect of our role is ensuring that the cloud services and architectures we design meet the highest standards of performance efficiency. I thought about KPIs to put here, and my suggestion is something like the reduction in load time, right? You worked on a website that used to take 3.4 seconds to load before and now it's taken 2.9 seconds. Huge win. Improvements in response times, the uh, overall reliability of cloud hosted applications. For this, let's try something new. Let's, let's, let's take a CDN content delivery network as a practical example. So yeah, just suppose we are working on an e-commerce platform and that e-commerce platform is experiencing slow loading times during peak traffic periods, which believe it or not affects user experience and potentially sales. So by architecture a solution that integrates a CDN among other things, you're able to cache content closer to users, which drastically reduces the load times, which also improves the overall user experience. If you take the time to document the before and after metrics of such implementation, you know, because you can't improve what you can't measure, then you will be able to back up your contributions to performance efficiency, and it could easily be tracked as a KPI as well. All right, let's dive deeper and talk about cost and efficiency management because these are critical. But they are just one part of our multi-faceted role, multi-faceted, multi-faced role, <laughs> a solutions architect. And next, we will explore how we ensure our architectures not only perform well and remain within budget, but also adhere to the highest standards of security and compliance. So stay with me as we delve into how to measure our impact in maintaining robust security postures and ensuring compliance across our cloud deployments. Welcome back, we're diving into the world where solutions architects put their capes and wield their shields. The thrilling realm of security and compliance. Now, before you yawn and think about skipping ahead, just remember, in the cloud, security is just, it's not a feature. It's the foundation. It's job zero, as AWS likes to call it. Without security, we might as well just invite hackers um, to a tea party in our data centers and hand off uh, two-factor authentication keys or something. So let's explore how we, the guardians of the cloud, can measure our superhero efforts in keeping our architecture safe and compliant. Okay, enough cheesiness. I'll just go right ahead and start talking about the main KPI that I track here, security compliance rate, which is essentially fancy speak for how well are you keeping the threats at bay? You know, this includes, but not limited to conducting regular security audits, to employing tools like AWS's Well Architecture tool, and we have a video about that, and also ensuring all deployments meet the organization's security benchmarks. Okay, so just for a bit of fun, you know, just for a bit of fun, picture scheduling your monthly wars, uh, Well Architecture reviews, not as mundane meetings, these meetings sometimes take four, five hours, but you know, just picture, these are not just boring meetings, but as epic battles where you strategize to fortify your castle. 
that would be your cloud environment. And so each successful audit is a victory. And over time, you're not just defending. Over time, you're building an impregnable fortress. You know, remember that hilarious time when you discovered an open S3 bucket and it was like finding the castle gates left wide open, right? But then you fixed it and now your cloud kingdom is a lot safer. And because even superheroes need to level up their skills, in the fast evolving cloud landscape, staying on top of latest security practices is akin to acquiring new powers. And in this KPI, I would be tracking the training sessions attended. Obviously, quality over quantity, but at least, hey, we're measuring something. So that gets us to the next level. I would be measuring the certifications achieved, uh, the workshops conducted to ensure you and your team and your customers are, okay, one last time, are the Avengers of cloud security. Okay, that's good. <laughs> okay. Imagine if Thor never upgraded Mjolnir. Or imagine if Batman is stuck with 20 years old gadgets. You know, they would be pretty ineffective and that's why we want to measure these things so we can improve them. Because similarly, updating your arsenal with the latest cloud security certifications is not just about adding fancy title uh, to your LinkedIn profile. I, I see a lot of LinkedIn profiles where people put 12 times AWS certified and you know, it's, it's fine, but I don't think this should be your end goal. This should be about ensuring you are equipped to protect your digital realm against these ever evolving threats. Plus, who doesn't love boasting about being a certified cloud security ninja at dinner parties? <laughs> I've actually documented my journey to becoming a certified uh, specialty cloud security specialty professional or whatever uh, at AWS in a recent video. And it's been quite the adventure and I highly recommend you check it out, put a link in the descriptions. I've documented how I approached it, what are my takeaways, and also how I would approach it uh, again if I would thinking about this uh, from scratch. So there you have it folks, your guide to measuring your superhero efforts in the realms of security and compliance. I just want you to remember that in the cloud, the battle for security is ongoing, but with the right KPIs, maybe a dash of humor, we can make it an adventure rather than a chore. And so next up, we will explore the softer side of our roles, engaging with stakeholders and ensuring our cloud architectures bring smiles to users' faces. Stick around, the journey continues. Okay, you're still here. I'm actually impressed you made it this far. My YouTube retention rate is very low usually that I think that I bore people, but you know, you cannot cover such an important topic in a short or in a TikTok. I mean, some people take a stab at it. I, I just, I can't. Anyways, welcome to the final stretch of our journey today, where we explore the heart and soul of what it means to be a solutions architect. And for me, that means engaging with our stakeholders and ensuring the happiness of our users slash customers. It's there, it's in the stories we write together with those who we serve that the true impact of our work is felt. So let's dive in into this segment with a spirit of inspiration and, and you know, why not a drive to make a difference? I like to think I'm not just designing cloud solutions, I'm crafting experiences. Each line of code, each architectural decision, each technology choice has the potential to bring smiles to facilitate growth and to transform businesses. And so I thought about the user satisfaction score as a KPI, but you know, I don't want this to just be a metric. I think this should be the reflection of the lives and the businesses we touch through our work. Think about it for a second. Remember that time where you optimized that cloud service resulting in a faster load time. It wasn't just the application that sped up, was it? It was the pace of business. It was the efficiency of teams behind. It was the trust. This segment here is where our role transcends the boundaries of technology and touches the realm of dreams, the realm of ambitions. You know, when you deliver projects on time, within budget, that's awesome. That's like keeping promises. Everyone loves a person who keeps their promises. It's, it's about showing uh, your stakeholders that their trust in you is well-placed. 
that their visions are achievable, might take more time, but they're achievable, and that you're the architect who can turn their blueprints into reality. You know, I've seen that smile on so many faces and consider the last project you, you delivered. Um, all the late nights that went into it, all the innovative solutions, all the teamwork, it's all culminated in a lunch that was not just timely, but it was impactful. That's like a relay race where every handoff matters. Your precision, your commitment, ensured that the baton not only reached its final destination, but it also did it with flying colors. Okay, as we wrap up this segment, remember our work as solutions architects goes beyond the confines of servers and databases and technologies and code and IDEs. We are the bridge between technology and humanity. We are the translators of complex needs into seamless solutions. We are the craftsmen of experiences that resonate. So thank you for joining me on this journey today. If this message resonates with you, please share your stories in the comments below. Let's inspire each other. Let's grow together in this honestly incredible journey of shaping the cloud one solution at a time. And before I let you go, as we conclude our journey today, I want to leave you with a tangible blueprint, a summary of the key performance indicators, the KPIs we've explored throughout the video. These aren't just metrics as, as I've been trying to convey, uh, these are your compass, uh, I believe, in the vast and ever-evolving landscape of cloud architecture. You will find the link in the description below, so enjoy it. So maybe you want to print that PDF and, and put it in front of you at your desk or whatever, you do with it whatever you want. Until next video, have a great week. Peace out.